This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Honey Badger has your back when it counts. They are the only air tracker that combines air monitoring, uptime monitoring, and cron monitoring into a single and simple to use platform. Their mission is to tame production and make you a better, more productive developer. In this episode, we're going to have a look at a very simple Rails application where we have a home which takes us to the welcome index and then we have post which is just a scaffold with a attribute title. And we are going to turn this into a hybrid application with Turbo iOS. So within the simulator, instead of having the navigation buttons as we would within the web application, we're going to remove those if we are using the mobile application and then we'll use the tab bar for those instead. So we can click on the home, it'll take us to the home page, or we can click on posts, and it'll take us to our various posts. And because Strata is not yet released, which is the third component of Hotwire, we're just going to have a look at the Turbo aspect and the Turbo iOS library and how to incorporate that into our application. And as a disclaimer, I wouldn't say that I am a good iOS developer. It's something that I mess with once every few years. But hopefully this episode will help you get a bit more familiar with how Turbo Native for iOS works. And if you are just getting started, I highly recommend that you come down into their documentation because that's where we are actually going to start with. And the steps are pretty well laid out. So if we first go under the installation, I'm going to just copy the GitHub repository URL as that's going to be the first thing that we need to do within our new application within iOS. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code Ruby for free shipping within the United States. So within Xcode, we're going to create a new application We'll give it a product name, and it's going to be important that we select our interface as a storyboard with a lifecycle of the UI kit app delegate. And of course, we'll be using the Swift language. And once we select a place to save it, we then get taken into our project. The first thing that we need to do is to come under the project and click on the Turbo iOS example. If for whatever reason you are on a different view, you can just come up to the root project at the top left, and then with the project selected, we'll come over to the Swift packages. We'll click the plus, and then we'll just paste in the URL for the Turbo iOS library. We'll leave the rules as the default, and click next, and then we can click finish. And so within this application, we have a few different files that were created. The launch screen is going to be that image that just gets displayed while the application is loading. The main storyboard is typically where you would put your views and the links to different controllers and that kind of stuff. However, in this application, we're really not going to use that. And so our main entry point is going to be the app delegate, which handles the application lifecycle. And then that's going to be dependent on the scene delegate. And the scene delegate is going to be what's happening within the window. And then we have our view controllers, which the view controllers is going to be each one of the different views. However, we're really not going to use this particular view controller because when we create our UI web frame, it's actually going to be under the scene delegate. And from there, we'll create the web UI and that web UI will then launch our application. So back to the quick start guide, we see that they have the scene delegate and it wants us to replace the entire file with this code. However, for now, I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to replace the first scene within my scene delegate. We also need to import in Turbo. And if we come back, there's also some extensions to our scene delegate for the session delegate. And so for now, I'm going to just go ahead and copy this and we'll put it at the end of our file. And so to test this out, we can select a simulator and we can hit run. This will build our application and then it'll launch our simulator with the example application. We can navigate around on here and you'll see that we have a UI navigation controller 
and when we click on another link, it'll take us to another view controller, and we can just hit the back button to navigate back through all of these. However, we'll want to use our own application, and I'm just going to use ngrok to get a fully qualified domain name that will point to my localhost port 3000, and this is on HTTPS, which is going to be required for the web view. So I can just replace on line 18 within our scene delegate to our ngrok address. And for now, within our Rails application, under our development environment, I'm going to just come down and select the config.hosts is equal to nil. So that way, any web address pointing to our application will be up and running. And so with ngrok running and running our Rails application, we can come back to Xcode, execute our application again, it'll rebuild, and it'll launch the application, and everything works. And so I'm going to go ahead and generate a scaffold for our posts, and I'll just create a title attribute. We'll migrate the database, and then we can come into our application, html.erb, and we can create a link to our post index. So coming back to our simulator now, I'll just click on the home. So now we have our home and our posts, and everything seems to work. However, if we click on a new post, and we click in the title, you see that immediately zooms in, like it would for a web application. And that's not really a good user experience. So within our viewport, we have a width for the device width, an initial scale, and then we can set a maximum scale. We'll set this equal to one, and a user dash scalable, we can set that equal to zero. So by doing that now, if we come into our posts to create a new post and click on our title, it doesn't zoom in. It stays at the current zoom level. We can then create a post and it works. However, let's go ahead and remove the home and posts if we are on our iOS application. We would still need this for our web view. And so to do that, within our scene delegate, we need to import the web kit. And if we scroll down to where the session is getting created, we can create a variable called configuration, and we can set this equal to the WK web view configuration, and then we can call configuration dot application name for user agent. It's going to be a string, so we can set this equal to any kind of string we want. In this case, I'm just going to call it the Drift and Ruby iOS. It's going to be important to copy this and remember what it is, because when we create our session, we're going to pass in the web view configuration, and the configuration that we're going to pass through is the variable that we just created called configuration. So now if we build and run this, whenever we make a request to our application, we can access that user agent with a request dot user underscore agent. We'll save this, and then we'll just refresh, and you'll see that it's coming from the iPhone, but the important bit is that it has the Drift and Ruby iOS. So I'm going to just create a helper within our Rails application, and I'm just going to call it mobile. We can then check for this request user agent if it includes the Drifting Ruby iOS. So then in our application HTML ERB, we could do an unless mobile, and then it's going to exclude those from our view. So our normal web application on a browser is going to work just fine, where we'll still see those links. However, in our simulator, they're now gone. And so if you are familiar with using iOS applications or really any kind of mobile app, then you usually will see a tab bar down at the bottom. And on that tab bar, you would have the most important items that you would need for this application. There could be some optional menu items, or within the view, you might have some additional navigation, but typically the most important things are down there at the bottom. So we need to create a tab bar with our two elements. And that's where a lot of the confusion can come into play because basically all of this gray area is our web view. And getting the native buttons or tab bar to interact with a web view can be rather complicated. But before we go further, I think it's going to be important to have a look at this scene delegate and what's actually going on. So at the top, 
The navigation controller is a UI navigation controller. And that is this template up at the top where you would then have a button on the left and on the right. We are setting the Windows root view controller equal to this navigation controller. So that basically means that the view controller that is within the main storyboard, which is the entry point for the view and the respective view controller class, really aren't going to do anything in this particular application because we are overriding it with the navigation controller. We're then calling a function called visit where we pass in our URL and the URL string is to our ngrok address. This visit function references to this private function down below where we are setting a view controller equal to the visitable view controller passing in the URL. And this is a turbo iOS controller and eventually it creates a web view. Within our navigation controller that we created, we are pushing the view controller, which is the turbo view. And so for this application, it's pretty simple where we just have one web view. So we need just one associated session. And the nice thing about this is if we don't do anything, and if we don't have any major requirements as far as the login or authentication, then if all of the main functionality is still going to be within the web view, we might just have some navigational components outside of the web view. So essentially no authenticated requests are coming from the native portion of the application. Then all of the cookies and session for the browser will be automatically handled within iOS. We don't have to mess with any of that. And so if we do want to create our own UI tab bar, I wouldn't want to necessarily put it within this scene delegate. I think that would get a bit confusing because this is really supposed to be handling the responsibility of the UI window and what's going on there, not necessarily all of the specific components on it. So instead of creating a new UI navigation controller, I'm going to just create a new instance of our view controller, which is something that we already have created. And so this view controller that came with our application, it is a UI view controller. However, we need to make this a UI navigation controller. And we're also going to have to call the UI tab bar delegate so we can delegate the controls and functions of clicking on our tab bar over to the scene delegate. So at first, we'll go ahead and create a tab bar and We'll set this equal to a UI tab bar. We then create a item and we'll just call this the item home is equal to a UI tab bar item. And here we have a couple of different options. We can use some of the system icons or we can use a title with our own image. So if we select the tab bar system item, we can select something like favorites and we'll just give this a tag of zero. If we set the item posts is equal to the UI tab bar item, we'll need to select a different image. I'll just call this one bookmarks and we'll have a tag of one. So when this view controller comes into view, so that's going to be the function, the view did load. And then we can set our tab bar dot items is equal to an array of the item home and the item posts on our self dot view dot add sub view, we can add our sub view of the tab bar. So if we run this now, we have our view, but we don't see our tab bar, even though we added it to the view. And that's because the tab bar is out of frame. So we can set the tab bar frame is equal to, and then we can call CG rect. And this is where it'll take in a few different options. For the X, we want it to be on the very left side. And we know the height is 49 pixels. That's just the height of a tab bar. And for the width, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. We can get the self view frame dot width and the height. We can set it to the self dot view dot frame dot height. And we would have to subtract some height from it. And for whatever reason, this does work on the application. And if we run this, we now see that we have our favorites and our bookmark, 
But that's the problem with using these system icons is that you really don't have much control over the naming of these. So this is our home button and this is for our posts, but right now they don't do anything. So even with these anchored at the bottom, you might need to modify this to get it working in all different scenarios and orientations. And so the UI tab bar delegate that we had added up here at the top of our class, that's where it's now going to come into play because when we click on one of the buttons, it wasn't actually doing anything. So in our scene delegate, we can set our navigation controller dot tab bar. We can set the delegate equal to the self, which is going to be our scene delegate. And when we do this, we get the error, cannot assign value of type, scene delegate to type, UI tab bar delegate. And honestly, when I was preparing this episode, this threw me for a loop, and I really just had no idea what it was expecting me to actually do. So if I scroll down to the very bottom, we have an extension for our scene delegate to the session delegate. If we copy that and do something very similar, but if we do this for the UI tab bar delegate, if we save this and build now, now the build succeeds, and now we have our tab bar delegate equal to self without any issues. So within this UI tab bar delegate, we can create a function for our tab bar, and the tab bar is a UI tab bar. The method or the action that we need is the did select, and that's going to be for an item of a UI tab bar item. And so now within here, we can just call a switch on the item.tag, and we can do a case of zero, and we can print to our console, this is our home button. We can have a case for one, and that's going to be for our posts, and we can have a default, and we do have to break. So now building it, it succeeds, and we can run our application, and things look like it's working correctly. And with everything running now, if we click on the favorites, which is our home button, you now see that we have home printed out. If we click on the bookmarks, which is our post, that works as well. So now we have some kind of interaction. So because we are doing this within our scene delegate, we can just do a visit to the URL. It is a type of URL with a string and we can set this equal to our ingrock address. If on the posts, we can then set it to the ingrock address forward slash posts. And if we try to build it, it fails, so we do have to add a bang at the end of these. It'll then build successfully. We can run our application now, and now if we click on bookmarks, it actually takes us to the bookmarks. But one thing I really don't like about this is that now it has its template to go back. If I click on the home button, you can see that it's just pushing new UIs and that can be really annoying. So if we come back and come back and come back, it's basically like a browser back button and really doesn't give it that native application feel to it. And as a side note, because all of this is happening in the scene delegate, if we wanted to, we could create a home function to just break up our logic so it's not all happening within this tab bar switch we can create our function home where we then visit the URL. So I'll leave this here as well as just a case where we simply just visit the endpoint. But now let's go ahead and fix the issue where when we click around, we get this return to the previous view controller. And so that is happening because we have our view controller under the visit function. And so I'm just going to remove that and I'm just going to put it up at the top outside of our class. And so now that the view controller is up here outside of the visit function, we really don't want to push the view controller because this is what is actually creating a new view controller. So we do still need to push our view controller to the navigation controller. So I'm just going to remove this and just put it up here within our will connect to function. So whenever we visit, we do still have to update the URL. So we can call our view controller and then set the visitable URL. And we can set this equal to the URL that's coming into this function. So now if we run this, we get our application loaded as we would expect. And when I click on the posts, it doesn't switch view controllers. 
we're still within the same UI navigation view controller and the visitable view controller. We are just updating the URL and changing it. And navigating back and forth, that seems to work pretty well. So let's say we have a situation where we just need to expand the visitable view controller a little bit more. I'm just going to create a new file. It's going to be a Swift file. And I'm just going to call this the web view controller. We can import the UI kit. And we also need to import in Turbo. We need to do that because the class that we want to create, it's our web view controller. And it's going to be an instance of the visitable view controller. And so we could have an override function on the view did load. And we'll just call the super view did load. But then we can do something like an override of the function visitable did render. And so this is going to happen whenever we are basically pushing a new visit through our session. And so we can set the title is equal to drifting Ruby. And so now that we had this web view controller, we can come back over to our scene delegate. And instead of setting our view controller equal to the visible view controller, we would set it to our web view controller. And so now by setting it to the web view controller, if we run our application, you now see that we have the title Drift and Ruby at the top. Even when we navigate around, it's not going to override and take the title of the page to the title of our application. And you can see where this was originally defined under the Swift Packages Dependencies Turbo. If we look at the source for the visible view controller, down here at line 32, we can see the visible did render where it's setting the title is equal to the visible view web view title. And so I hope that this was a good example where you can use some of the native components within iOS to interact with your web view and with Turbo iOS. If you would like to see more about Turbo iOS, just head over to driftandruby.com, sign up for an account, and then post it as a suggestion. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.